Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will see the first isomorphism theorem and uh, some of its uh, consequences. Uh, so, let us fix some notations. Uh, let us start with uh, G and G dash being two groups and uh, we have this uh, group homomorphism from G to G dash. Okay. So, recall that uh, some of the notions uh, that we have defined uh, related to this group homomorphism which is the kernel. So, kernel is a normal subgroup in G and there is this image. The image is actually a subgroup of G dash. Okay. Now, what we want to do? So, once we know that the kernel is actually a normal subgroup in G, then one can make this quotient G modulo the kernel. Okay. So, this is a quotient group or a factor group. So, now what we want to do? We want to relate this with the image of G, image of phi. Okay. Indeed, what we prove? We prove that they are isomorphic. Okay. So, let us see how one can prove this. Okay. So, and then we will also see some uh, examples of this to understand this better. Okay. So, you have a map from G to G dash. Okay. So, this is a map. So, this map can be actually thought of as a map from G to just the image of phi. Okay. So, what is image of phi? This is all the range, all the uh, images of elements of capital G. Okay. So, now uh, note that this kernel, okay, let, let me draw a picture. So, this is G and here you have the image which is sitting inside your G dash. So, this is your image. Okay. So, note that, so this kernel will be somewhere here. Okay. Where the kernel is mapped? Kernel is mapped to the identity element. Okay. So, this entire thing is mapped to this identity element. Okay. So, now because kernel is being a subgroup of this capital G, so one can actually talk about the left cosets of the kernel. For example, if we take the left coset of this kernel, so let us call it x kernel phi. And then we want to see where this x kernel phi is mapped. Okay. So, let us do this computation aside. So, what is x kernel phi? So, this is x times z where z is coming from the kernel of phi. So, look at all these elements. So, let us take some typical element and compute what happens. Phi of x z is going to be phi x phi z, but phi z is what? it is identity because z is coming from the kernel. So, then this is going to give you exactly phi x and this is true for all z inside the kernel of phi. So, if you take look if you look at the image of this particular coset okay, x kernel phi because kernel phi is being normal subgroup this is also same as the right coset kernel phi x. Okay. So, where this coset is mapped, this coset is mapped exactly to this phi of x. Okay. And similarly, if you start with some element in the image, let us call it A and then we want to look at what will happen to phi inverse of A. So, let us look at phi inverse of A. So, what is phi inverse of A? Phi inverse of A by definition all x okay, in G that are mapped to phi x equal to A. Okay. So, let us fix one such x. Let us call it x naught which is inside phi inverse of A. Okay. So, then what happens? Then you can see that if you take some other x inside, okay, this is something let us fix. 
so let some other x inside phi inverse of this a so then what happens then you can see that phi x naught is same as a and then same as phi x then if you compute phi x naught x inverse so then this is exactly equal to or yeah phi x naught x inverse so this is exactly equal to phi of x naught times phi of x inverse so which is exactly equal to phi of x naught times phi of x inverse which is a times a inverse which is identity in g dash okay so that tells you that this x naught x inverse is indeed in the kernel of phi that means x naught kernel phi is same as x kernel phi the cosets correspond to these two are same okay so in particularly you can see that okay you can rewrite this as x x times x not inverse inside kernel phi and then x is inside x not kernel phi okay so basically if you start with x inside the phi inverse of a so then you can see that that x is inside x not kernel phi okay so but the calculation earlier calculation says this pre image of a is exactly equal to x not kernel phi okay so if you go back to our diagram so if you take this a and then look at phi inverse of a so this is just another coset x not kernel phi okay so basically what we have done we have divided this g into the small small pieces okay so because uh, like i said the kernel phi is a subgroup and with respect to that subgroup g is union of cosets because kernel is being normal left cosets or right cosets they, they don't make any difference they are all equal but what we indeed observed each coset is mapped to one single element inside g so here you have g dash and here you have g and this is your kernel phi and this is some x1 kernel phi and so on some xi kernel phi and so on so this where this is all mapping this kernel phi is mapping to identity and this is mapping to phi of x1 and so on then this is mapping to x i okay so this indeed tells you that you are partitioning g into smaller smaller cosets and each coset is mapped to some unique element in g dash or image of g dash image of phi okay so this already tells you that if you go modulo the kernel then we must have isomorphism okay so let's verify that so you have a map from g to image phi so which is you calling it phi okay so now we are going to define this phi tilde which is a map from g modulo kernel phi to okay maybe i will call it phi bar from image of phi so what is this map you take x kernel phi and then map it to phi of x so we just verified this map is well defined because if you take any other element from this the coset then uh, the image will be same okay that is why this is actually well defined map and we will directly verify this is actually uh, surjective injective as well as group homomorphism okay so the surjectivity is obvious because any element of image phi will be some phi of x then you can look at the corresponding x kernel p phi that will map to phi of x so this is obviously surjective phi is surjective is obvious okay now what's about phi being injective so look at phi x equal to phi y 
then you immediately get phi of x y inverse is exactly identity. So, that will imply that x y inverse inside the kernel of phi. So, that means x kernel phi is same as y kernel phi. So, that is what we wanted to prove to prove injectivity. So, that means phi is injective. Okay. So, now let us verify phi is group homomorphism or phi bar. Okay. So, let me call it phi bar. So, phi bar of x kernel phi times y kernel phi we want to prove this is exactly equal to phi bar of x kernel phi times phi bar of y kernel phi. Okay. So, let us look at what it is. So, phi bar of x kernel phi is exactly phi of x and phi bar of y kernel phi is exactly phi of y. So, the right hand side is just phi of x times phi of y. What is on the left hand side? You can see that x kernel phi times y kernel phi because kernel phi is being normal. So, this is exactly x y times kernel phi. So, that means phi of x kernel phi times y kernel phi okay, is exactly phi of x y kernel phi. So, which is exactly phi x y, but because phi is group homomorphism phi of x y we have equal to phi x phi y. So, that tells you that phi bar is indeed group homomorphism. Okay. So, we established one group homomorphism which is also isomorphism between these two groups. So, G modulo the kernel must be isomorphic to image. Okay. So, this is something you must have seen in linear algebra. If you have a linear space, okay, let us say T being a linear map from V to W where both V and W are vector spaces, then we can define what is the, the call, call the kernel. Kernel of T is those vector V, those are mapped to uh, 0. Okay. But if you think about V, W as a group, groups with respect to the additions that are there in the vector spaces. So, then the kernel T is indeed the kernel that we define. Okay. So, in particularly V modulo kernel T as a group abelian groups isomorphic to this okay let us say uh, this is surjective map so then this is isomorphic to w so this is something comes for free but this uh, because v and w possess extra uh, extra structure which is uh, there is a scalar multiplication with respect to that it is actually a vector space so, this isomorphism is indeed isomorphism of vector spaces. Okay. So, this is very, very important uh, particular case. So, if we think about it, we have seen many, many examples. Let us work it out uh, all those examples and then see that uh, the, what this means in our examples. Okay. For example, we took, so this is the example 1. So, we took G to be R2 plus and then H to be your x axis. Okay. So, that is the geometric example that we saw. So, this is R2 and this is our H. So, now you can ask what is R2 modulo H? Because R2 is being abelian group, any subgroup is a normal subgroup. So, R2 modulo H makes sense. So, if you think about it, so we had a map from R2 to this y axis. Okay. So, what is that map? So, that is the projection map x y goes to just 0 comma y. Okay. So, you take some particular element x y and then project it there. So, this is x y then you project it to this 0 comma y. So, this is a definitely a linear map in particularly group homomorphism. Okay. So, then what is the kernel of this map? The kernel of this map, let us call it phi. So, this is those x y 
in R2 such that when you apply phi of x y that should be 0 in your y axis ok. What is y axis is a subgroup the 0 is just 0 comma 0. So, that means 0 comma y should be 0 comma 0 that means y should be 0. So, the kernel of phi is exactly x comma 0 in R2 where x is coming from R. But what is this? This is exactly your x axis ok. It is easy to see that phi is surjective map. So, in particularly R2 modulo h is isomorphic to the image of this phi which is y axis ok. So, naturally that is why these lines that we have drawn parallel to x axis. So, they naturally parameterized by the y coordinate uh, that is intersecting with the y axis ok. So, that is indeed gives you the group structure. The addition of these two lines that are parallel to x axis is same as adding two numbers on the y axis ok as groups they are isomorphic. So, let us see some more example ok somewhat non trivial examples ok. So, let us look at C star ok. So, this is our group. So, this is my example 2 and then your subgroup is S 1. Again both are like abelian groups. So, S 1 is normal in C star. So, C star modulo S 1 makes sense. Again this is a geometric example. So, you have this uh, punctured plane and you have this unit circle. We already seen that. So, any ray is going to be our uh, parameterizing set for the C star modulo S 1. So, that means, uh, the C star modulo S 1 should look like this uh, ray ok. So, let us define a map from C star to R plus which is 0 comma infinity. What is the map? There is this standard map z go to the modulus of z ok. So, this is my group homomorphism. So, now you can easily check that z goes to mod z is actually a group homomorphism because mod z w is same as mod z times mod w ok. But what is the kernel of this map? The kernel of this map those z in c, c star such that mod z is just 1 because phi of z is mod z and the identity element on the right side is 1. So, this is exact, but what is this? This is exactly S 1 ok. That means, C star modulo S 1 is isomorphic to image of phi, but it is not hard to see the image is full, it is surjective. So, this is exactly isomorphic to 0 comma infinity with respect to addition, but you can see that that is the ray that we are choosing ok. For example, if you choose this particular ray, so this is a group with respect to this ok. So, now let us look at another example. So, maybe I will leave this as exercise. You can also look at C star and then modulo for example, this R plus which is this 0 infinity and then check what it is isomorphic to 1 ok. So, now let us see somewhat interesting example ok. So, you can also take G to be uh, the set of integers and then h to be the subgroup n z. Then the g mod h will be naturally isomorphic to the z modulo n z that we define ok. So, that is the motivation for this notation z modulo n z. That means, z modulo n z is a group that is obtained by going modulo n z of z ok. So, this is something I will leave it again. So, again another in interesting exercise you can also try to calculate what will happen to R star modulo plus or minus 1 ok. So, the R star is again punctured line. So, this is your R star and then this 1 minus 1 is there because all these are abelian groups. So, any subgroup is a group. So, then what is this? You can see that this will be actually isomorphic to 0 comma infinity. I will I will actually 
uh, urge you to look for the homomorphism from r star to 0 comma infinity whose kernel is this plus or minus one okay okay so here is somewhat more interesting and uh, again uh, motivated from geometry some example okay so we can look at g to be r as i said r is abelian so we can take any subgroup and then look at its uh, quotient so let us take h to be eject okay so then what is r modulo eject so like i said r modulo eject should look like the circle because you are taking the real line and then you are translating any this interval closed to 0 comma 1 with uh, this uh, integral uh, translations so that means you can identify okay so this 0 1 with 0 identify with 1 so this looks like circle so that is why you expect this to be isomorphic to s1 so how it is how one can prove this you can take r and then you can define a map from r to s1 take theta and then just send it to 2 pi i theta okay so then you can see that this kernel of this map let us call it pi which is exactly h so in particularly r modulo the kernel pi which is r modulo is at will be isomorphic to s1 so this is obviously onto map and this is a group homomorphism i will leave it to you to check so you get this r modulo is at s1 so here is the interesting thing so you have this q mod is at okay this is actually sitting inside r modulo is at because q modulo is just is a subgroup so this is going to sit naturally inside r modulo is at so under this isomorphism you can ask where that will be mapped we already seen that elements of q modulo is at they are all having finite orders okay so what will be finite order elements in s1 so finite order elements in s1 they will be just roots of unity okay so so this u this is the roots of unity so that means this is those is at in c such that is at power n is 1 for some n in n okay if you take this as definition of roots of unity then you can see that q mod is at mapped by pi to exactly u okay for example you may you may wonder there is this nth root of unity so fix n in n then you can look at all those is at in c such that or c star let us put it c star then is at power n equal to identity so this is nth roots of unity okay so this is nth roots of unity we have seen that this nth roots of unity is actually a cyclic group okay so you may ask what will be the pi inverse of u n inside this q model is it or r model which okay so i will leave it to you to find this okay so find explicitly this pi inverse of u this is a cyclic group of order m inside q mod h okay so this i leave it as exercise so this is kind of opens up so many possibilities okay if you start with any abelian group any subgroup you can take and then quotient it out and then look for quotient group so this is giving us lots of lots of interesting new groups okay so sometimes we have to be careful for example g mod h1 being isomorphic to g mod h2 does not necessarily imply h1 isomorphic to h2 okay when you go to the quotient something very very funny thing ha can happen okay the quotient could be isomorphic but the original subgroups that you started with may not be isomorphic so let me give one example okay so let us start with g being c star okay so then you take you can take h b okay let us take h let us call it h n 
so that is your u n ok. So, C star modulo u n this is actually isomorphic to C star itself. So, how one can see this? So, define this map call it phi n from C star to C star. So, what you do you take take z and then send it to z power n ok. This is naturally a group homomorphism. Then what will be the kernel of this map? The kernel of this map is those z in C star such that z power n is 1. So, this is exactly u n that means C star modulo this u n will be isomorphic to image of this phi n. But if you think about it z power n equal to w will have always a solution for any w complex number that means this map is indeed surjective map. So, this surjection comes from the fundamental theorem of algebra that means any polynomial equation over complex number has a solution. So, we are looking at this particular polynomial equation ok for given w. So, that means this is exactly equal to C star. So, for all this finite subgroups of C star if you go modulo C star you are getting C star, but these subgroups are not definitely isomorphic because they have different cardinalities ok. U n has exactly the cardinality n. So, when n varies then they will have different cardinalities, but, but their quotients they are all isomorphic. So, something very very strange can happen uh, when you go to the quotient ok. So, uh, so maybe I will again give more exercises for example, you can work it out what will be q modulo 2 z and then what will be q modulo even for some m z for m is being some natural number ok identify these groups. And when I say identify that means you have to identify this as some known groups which are simple to understand geometrically ok. Uh, and then so here is another exercise which is easy. So, let g being subgroup of C star where g is finite ok this is a subgroup. So, then you can see that g is isomorphic to some u n where n is the order of g ok. In particularly C star modulo g isomorphic to C star. So, for any finite subgroup you have this C star modulo g is isomorphic to C star ok. Sometime by knowing some information about the quotient you will be able to say something about the original group ok. For example, you can say that if g modulo the center of g is cyclic ok. So, then g is abelian ok. So, this is something uh, easy to prove. So, you first find out uh, some cyclic generator use that cyclic generator to prove that g is abelian ok. So, this is something I will leave it to you and we also have this lattice isomorphism theorem ok. So, that is something I already established. So, if you have a homomorphism let us say phi from g to g dash. So, we can assume it to be surjective not a problem because anyway we are going to restrict to the image. So, then we already seen that the collection of subgroup h, h is a subgroup of g kernel of phi is contained in h from this to this there is a one to one correspondence from b which is those h dash where h dash is a subgroup of g. Okay. So, you can see that this uh, uh, correspondence takes subgroup to subgroup. So, one can also prove indeed ok let me state it as exercise this also takes normal subgroup to some normal subgroup. If n is normal in G ok and uh, of course, the kernel should contain kernel of phi should be contained in n. So, then 
ok if and only if ok. So, let us so let me write it properly. Let us start with something in in capital A ok this is the hypothesis. So, then we have n is normal in G if and only if this phi of G this phi of n is normal in G dash. Of course, I am assuming phi is surjective map surjective map ok. In particularly what one can do one can look at G modulo n which makes sense this is a quotient group because n is normal. What one can prove this is naturally isomorphic to G dash modulo f of n and the map is given by a n goes to f of e sorry phi of a phi of n phi of a times phi of n ok. So, this is again immediate from uh, first isomorphism theorem. So, you have to establish a map from G to G dash model of phi n whose kernel is n ok that is something easy to do. I will leave it to you to check ok. So, uh, I will stop now. So, I will continue with uh, second and uh, third isomorphism theorems uh, later ok uh, in the next classes. Thank you.